So anyways, my name is Scott Holohan. I'm the District 40 Public Relations Manager, and my co-hosts tonight are Michael Pope, who's our webmaster, and he is also the 2019 Toastmaster of the Year in District 40. So <laughs> we've got some special people on, and John Huppert's on the line too. He's got some uh, really good information, and he'll kind of monitor the Q&A part when we get to it. So if you want to use Q&A, if you've got a question that you're just burning to ask, uh, put it in the chat box. We'll, we'll have a chance to uh, get to those hopefully by uh, by the uh, by the middle of the meeting. Maybe even maybe most of this meeting will be mostly Q and A. But what I want to do first of all is I want to go over a couple things. Uh, we're continuing our information sharing about online meetings, and Toastmasters is really opened up the floodgates in terms of giving opportunities for clubs to do online meetings. And they are, they are giving a lot of information out. Uh, we'll go over a, something that we just got from TI. Some of you, most of you club officers may have already received something in the mail from TI this week. We'll go over that real briefly. Uh, I want to give an opportunity, so think about this. If you've got some online experiences, online meeting experiences, which you would just want to talk about for one to two minutes, we're going to do some table topics. Just to be sharing some inspiration, some motivation for your online meetings, and maybe even some information that other people can, uh, can, can grab hold of. And then I think, like I said, a vast majority of this time, we'll, we'll do some uh, Q&A. So without, uh, Without further ado, I want to just go over, so most of you who are club officers, I got mine on the 13th, and basically this is a, a message from our international president, uh, Deepak Minan, who goes over just a little bit of information, and he's really allowing you to go online. He really wants you to go online. There's a lot of resources in here, so look, go look in uh, the Club Central, change your demographic. Uh, for, for online meeting attendance. One of the things that I was just checking before we got on this call tonight is, well, where is that shown in Club Central? Uh, maybe you can find out, but what I did is, well, I went to find a club. Unfortunately, the only thing that they really show is that it does say online attendance is allowed, okay? So one of the things that I would recommend that you do is you either put a registration link to your online meeting information on your website so you can go visit your website put your online meeting information in there or or I would really suggest that you go and you either put this in a registration form and a good way to do that is on a meetup page we use meetup to do a lot of not only club meeting coordination with club members but also people who are looking for an online club or looking for a club information. So put that also on your meetup page. We can get you involved with, if you don't have a meetup page, we have resources within the district. Uh, there's a gentleman, I'm not sure if he's on the bridge tonight, Steve Lanham, who can help get you set up. So that's one thing that, that you can do to try to get that word out for, for your clubs. Uh, some other things that they've done here, if you want to learn a little bit more about, gosh, I don't, I'm not really sure, uh, I'm not sure about doing these types of meetings on, online. Uh, Kate Wingrove, who's part of to Toastmasters International, has done a really good club transition video. So she kind of helps you feel really at ease with going to online meetings and gives you some helpful tips in there. I won't go over that. It's about a four minute video that, that she does a really good job on. The club flyers, uh, there's a couple of flyers that you can download to promote your prospective members to your online meetings so you can uh, deliver those digitally. Here's some uh, virtual meeting tips. So this is really good in general. Hey Scott, Toastmaster, hey Scott, go ahead. You want to share your, your screen? Oh, crap. Sorry about that. I'm learning still. <laughs> My apologies. All right, so uh, it's like I said, here's the online attendance at Club Central. Here's that online meeting 
note from uh, Deepak earlier this week, at least I got mine earlier this week. Club transition video, Kate does that really good job on there. There's some links to online flyers to send digitally to your prospects. Virtual team meetings, uh, tips. Click on these for general tools and tips. Um, one thing that Toastmasters does not do is they do not endorse any of the online meeting tools. They, they don't endorse Zoom, they don't endorse GoToMeeting, they don't endorse WebEx, it's whatever you wanna use, okay? So they don't, they don't have a favorite per se, but there's some just some general tools and tips no matter which one you use to use. Uh, digital ribbons, I thought this was really cool. So digital ribbons are actually items that you can download to give away for your best speakers, maybe your best evaluator or your best table topic. So it's a good way, I don't know if I have that here. So it's in the resource library. Let me see if I, I don't know if you can really see this that well. But they have a, a good way of being able to download these little templates and then give to your speakers. So Michael, if you look at Michael Pope, his background has one of those templates and it has a little best speaker ribbon on the side there. That's a nice little touch when you're performing your meetings, when you're doing uh, giving away awards, this is a nice little touch. Uh, email media template. So this is where you want to, maybe you've got some media outlets. This is one thing that I've, that I've tried to get out to the division directors and then hopefully down to the club level is that we have uh, online meetings uh, templates and e email templates that you can send to your media contacts. So your newspaper, your, um, your TV station, if you've got one, your radio stations. This is one where you can just invite them to join your meetings. But also, let me put in a plug here for also another good opportunity to send to your media outlets. What if you have an inspirational story about someone who joined and just and, and did a really good job and maybe even attained some levels, like maybe a DTM or a level five in Pathways or something like that. This is a good opportunity for you to as a VPPR or somebody as a club officer in your club to write up a little note about what they did and to inspire other people to get to your meetings. So this is a good opportunity for you to get to other media outlets besides uh, digital media, let's say Facebook or Meetup or some of the other common tools that we've talked about. So this is just a, a little basic overview of what came out from Deepak earlier this week. There's a lot of other information on toastmasters.org. If you wanna go there, just put in online meetings and you'll get a whole bunch of stuff on there to help you and your clubs with online meetings. Hey, Scott. Any, yep, any questions, go ahead. Yes, uh, on Deepak's letter, he's got a link toward the bottom that says instruction and resources. And that'll take you right to a website also. Yes, so there's a, there's a link that can take you to, like Steve mentioned, a lot of information about. Keep on going down. So there's helpful resources, meeting tips, meeting tips for club officers. So actually there is a nice, uh, I won't go into it, but there's a online club meeting software comparison. Talked about prospectus or prospective flyer. Prospect flyer. Here's Zoom background. So, other Zoom backgrounds. So, if you want to be a timer, let's say, you can put timing cards in your background. So, green, yellow, red. Those are also part of these uh, Zoom backgrounds. Talked about ribbons. Michael's kind of showing off the <laughs> green, yellow, red. So, that's good. I like that. So there's all sorts of information in here. I mean, it's, it seems like they've just kind of thrown the kitchen sink at us here. Video recording guidelines for online speech contests. We're in the middle of doing that. Uh, we've got a couple of good speech contests coming up here in the next two weeks. This weekend is on Cincinnati. Uh, next weekend, uh, the weekend of the 25th is Columbus. 
So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about online resources, they're, they're here, there's some, there's some how-to videos. Looks like there's not only just the tools here that you can click on, but there's also some videos. Some quick reads. So a lot of really good information here. Really invite you to go to toastmasters.org or again, that, that email that Deepak put out the instruction and resources link down here towards the bottom of his memo. Any other questions on this memo? Scott, uh, I have a question. So yes, if we go to the website, Toastmaster, yes. Uh, yes. Where, where can I see this? So the toastmasters.org, one of the one ways you can put is the uh, just do online meetings in the search up here in the upper right hand corner. Yep. Hopefully their search tool is pretty good. I think that I think I checked this and there is uh, there is some good good information here. So the first two things that come up <laughs> really good. Yep. Makes online sense. meetings, online meeting tips, online online meeting tips for club officers. All sorts of stuff. Perfect. Thank you. So the, the search, the search does work pretty good. Hey Scott, this is Gail. Um, yes, Gail. I just, this is really great information. I know that you said that this email went out only to the club officers. Will this also That's be great. information that will be in an upcoming newsletter? Because sometimes information that may not necessarily trickle down yes. to um, to the club of membership. This is great information. I am in process. Thank you for reminding me on that because I'm in process of drafting this one here coming out. We'll be out in the next, I would say, three to five days. Excellent. Thank you. So great, great info. Thank you for that reminder. I just wrote it down. As you could, this is Carrie Scott. Hi, Carrie. Go ahead. As you can see, I was, if nobody pay, was paying any, any attention, I was playing with my background and I put in, okay. <laughs> I put in the uh, bridge background that was on there and it said that it would prefer to have like a green background in order for it to show up. So is that on all of them? You know what? I have one that's like yours, Carrie, because watch when I do my virtual background. It's all like really pixelated and it doesn't do very good. Yeah, mine didn't do Mine's very good. Mine's pretty much the same way. So Carrie, I, I oh. actually ordered, I ordered a green screen background actually from Amazon. It's very inexpensive, which I'm hoping it'll come in Friday. And I did some testing even with uh, green construction paper and it works excellent if you have I literally have a green background. I have the same type of a laptop. So I know that's what it's looking for. Okay, so if I have white walls on one of them, it's a big white wall that I could, is white good to use? A solid, a solid background best. will work. If, you're, um, if your computer is, has a high enough processor, a solid wall will work as well. Okay. And that's all I have is a solid wall. Okay, I you don't have to have the right have equipment though. Process. So, some ca cameras can't handle it if, if they're not high definition enough. Okay. Just to let you know. Yeah, All there right. might be some technology challenges with that. Just the, the so computer like my, processors, yeah. yeah. So my wall is solid behind me. So it's, it's not green, but it's, it's solid. So it's not a perfect um, match. Mm hmm. John Humpert, you have a green, literally a green backdrop, don't you? If you're on. I thought yes. I saw. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a green cloth and it's just hanging about a foot uh, behind me. It happens to just tuck nicely into the drop ceiling that I have. So okay. it's, it's very, uh, very easy if you've got that drop ceiling or have another way that you can. Get it okay. Get Another it comment is if you wear green clothing, then that will become part of the picture. So don't wear green clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it won't it won't be quite see it. Well, it'll be totally see through. Um, uh, <laughs> if your if your camera it might, 
I, I doubt this is going to work, but if you haven't wiped off your camera in a long time, you might try just cleaning the camera lens. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably not with your finger. <laughs> um, it, it's all about the camera having an easier time figuring out what is what part is you and what part is not you. Yeah, you can mess with lighting. You know, um, if if you put a bright light on you and turn off the lights of stuff behind you, the camera and the computer have a lot easier time figuring out which part is you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, John, for your insight. Okay. I, I guess I, I, at this point in time, I want to open it up to, to anybody. We have 32 people on the bridge here, and I want to give maybe an opportunity for somebody who's gone through an online meeting. And I want to, I want you to share something that pleasantly surprised you. Does anybody have like a, an example of, wow, this is just amazing. I mean, we all need interaction, but I mean, this is great. I mean, this is a, a great opportunity for you to interact. So were you, has somebody share their pleasant surprise if they've been on a meeting and they were pleasantly surprised? Anybody have something like that? I can start us off if no one is ready. So you guys can think about your, your pleasant surprise. So yesterday I attended a meeting in Poland, um, yesterday afternoon here, great meeting. And so I, and I learned, a, they have a, they do a couple different things. One is they had a, they have a game night after the party. So they, wow. so they had their, I mean, so they had their full meeting, but then they have like an after party scheduled as well for like an hour or so. And they play game online, games online with each other. So last night they played a game called Mafia. And I, I didn't stick around for the game because it was late. Well, I had to get back to work. But it, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, they had quite a few people. It was a little over 30 people in their meeting. And so they were going to stick around for this after party, as they, they called it. And, mm -hmm. and I guess they normally do after parties after their regular meeting in Poland there because it's an hour and a half meeting plus their after party. So that was one cool thing. Then also they had a, a special role for their meeting called, um, it, was, it was body language evaluator. So that person's job was to evaluate everybody's body language. You know, are you making eye contact with the camera, your gestures, et cetera. And so I thought it was really good. It was just neat to see different experiences. Interesting how you say eye contact with the camera, because if you're looking like, like I'm looking at a different, my, I'm looking at my computer screen but I'm not making eye contact with you. You're thinking like, well, what is he looking at? But now I've got to look at the camera eye. That, that, that way you know uh, I'm looking at you at the camera. I'd like to so make that, a comment, make a comment yeah. to Michael. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, today I was attending a meeting in Richmond, Virginia, and they said this is the first time we really used online meetings and the guy who evaluated me said he had a hard time evaluating the gestures mm. that was a new experience for him so uh you know these type of uh, you know meetings and discussions and webinars are helpful because people aren't sure how to shift from an in-person meeting to an online meeting so just trying to figure out you know how they can effectively evaluate the experience. But it was great because we actually, and Michael knows this person, we had someone from our Anthem office here in Ohio attend the Richmond office meeting from Anthem and we all came together. It was really fun. So it was a great experience. Thank you for sharing that. You know, this is a new dynamic. It, 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 it's not in person and it's gonna feel a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. But it is an effective way to communicate, just like Michael said, when he went, he's visiting people all across the world. And it doesn't have to be. It, it could be somebody just across town or in the next city. Uh, you know, we have to be able to communicate well, whether we're in person or whether we're on the phone or whether we're doing a video, a video conference like this. So I think it, it's a different dynamic. It's, it's new. You've got to practice it, and this is a great opportunity to practice. Hey, Scott. Yes. Uh, you talked about being able to look at the camera. Yes. Uh, I've set up a monitor behind 
uh, my PC. And it's a 21 inch monitor. And I, I can read the items off that and would appear as though I'm looking at the camera. That's really subtle. So you're, you're bringing up a really interesting point. So if you have a camera and you, maybe you have a laptop like I do, you might be able to put a second screen right in behind it, like Steve was saying, that you could read off of, let's say you're doing a presentation and you can put that, uh, that presentation right in line with that camera. So you're, it's almost, it's looking like you're looking at the camera. You, there might be a slight, a slight uh, angle that you're maybe looking up a little bit, but it's better than like this. It's better than, you know, down in the corner or, you know, he over here, that sort of thing. Well, with a reflection on my glasses. Anybody else want to share? With, <laughs> yeah, with a reflection start. on my glasses, you can't tell where the, where the eyes are necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Scott. I'd like to share, Scott. This is Bill. Uh, last night at uh, Grove City Toastmasters, we had our second virtual meeting, and it was so much improved over the first one, and it actually was one of the best, I think, and Kathy can jump in on this, one of the best meetings we've had in a long time, whether it was in person or virtual. It was really very smooth the way it worked, and people are starting to get the hang of this. Mm -hmm. And with each meeting, it's going to get better. Yep. And with the way everything is right now, this is going to be the new way of communicating. So the Bill, better what made it better? Can you give us some specifics? Yeah, I, I, people were looking at the camera. People were concerned about how they looked. They mm -hmm. weren't, you know, making funny faces, getting up, you know, too close to the camera. They were really concentrating on what's going to make them look better on camera. And we didn't even mention that. But the first meeting, people were saying, oh, we well, use too close to the camera. You're too far away. But with this one, everybody was a lot more comfortable with only the second meeting of being able to present virtual. And everybody had a chance to speak. And I think it worked out fantastic. And I think even the next meeting is just going to get better. Yep. Kathy, you want to jump in on that? Sure. We had an icebreaker, and he did fabulously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have another question. Go ahead, Carrie. When you're having these online meetings, like Michael's attending out of the country and um, everybody's attending, do you have a specific online that's there all the time that people sign into, or do you have to send them the link every time? Michael, you want to take a shot? Sure. I mean, it's, it's really, you have a couple different options. One, you can always have a static meeting ID and password for your meeting. If you set your meeting up as recurring, that's, that's kind of how it works. Okay. And then also, like a lot of times for my, for my recurring meetings, I still set up a registration form. So then that way, if anybody's visiting our meeting from another club, regardless of where they are, then I have their contact information. So if it's a first time visitor, et cetera, I get their email address and their name. And this makes it a little bit easier for me to follow up with them because I can always send them an email back, thanking them for coming to our meeting and invite them to another meeting. So the registration form, is a form that comes with the setup of the link? You can turn it on. So like for this meeting so tonight, there was the a way I did it form this. enabled. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead, I, Scott. Go I'm ahead, sorry. Michael. What did you say, Michael? I'm sorry, I lost Michael. At okay, the sorry. So for this meeting tonight, I had a registration form for the Zoom meeting. Okay, and where did you get, you got that from Zoom? Well, I, I, I just set it up. So there's a, there's a checkbox in Zoom. I turned that on and I added, so I'll, I'll let me share my that's screen. That's all right, that's all right. Okay. You wanna... I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not as up like to as you are okay. on uh, like to see how it. to do all this. I'm just trying to understand how other people get to the meeting. Right. And if I understand the basics, then that'll help me maybe later with the other ones. Yeah. So if you set up a continuing meeting, 
then that is the link you will have all the time, right? Yes, but you don't want to necessarily make your password public for, okay. for guests, but you still want to make it easy for guests to find your meeting. So what a lot of clubs do, either set up a registration form or on your free toast host site, you can have instructions of, hey, fill out the contact with us and we'll send you information on how to join our meeting. Okay, okay. That makes a little bit more sense to me on how to do it. Did you want to share your screen? Go ahead. <laughs> who's, who's next? <laughs> well, this is... I have a secondary question to kind of bridge that question. So the registration form, it, does it, um, like we talked about a waiting room. Does it, does it automatically let the person in the waiting room if you accept that registration form? How do you connect that? There, there's options for it. So I can say, if somebody registers, I automatically send them the Zoom ID and password and they can access the, the meeting, or I can make it where I have to approve it. Hi, um, Michael, this is Imelda, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I got a little bit confused with regards to this, to this registration, because I thought I already registered for the session, and then when I got in into the link, it was asking me to register again. Yeah, we had two because Scott set up one through constant contact as, as part of the normal process. Yes. And then I had one for this specific meeting as well. So we ended up having to register twice. Yeah. But for a I club guess, meeting, sorry you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have that for a club meeting. That's okay. correct. So, guess, so what, what he was just talking about was I, I use constant contact with a distribution list of all the people in District 40. I can... I've got club officer lists, I've got other distribution lists. So I created a registration form within constant contact with Michael's link. Now I probably should have looked at it really closely because what he, what he sent me was a registration link from Zoom. So what he's talking about is he's streamlining that process by basically giving a Zoom registration link right directly to you. You fill that out and then you'll get an email whichever email you put in to your registration, that's where the exact link to this meeting will be. Yeah. So okay. we did it, it, was, it wasn't very efficient, but eventually you got to the Zoom link, hopefully. At least three, yeah, that's, why, one. that's why I got a little bit late. I would just like to share, I just took a picture of the wall that I got right now a while ago, because this is not what I had before. And so just sharing it, took a picture and then downloaded it and got it into the background. I mean, it looks pretty good. It kind of cuts your head off a little bit. Your well, hair. it's because it, it's because I'm showing on the portion of my, for some reason, the, I don't know what's going on with the picture because it's, yeah my hair and all that it's cutting me off because I'm I'm I mean really showing off just my my hair and not the entire cap figure you may be blurring your background is there maybe a setting for blurred background okay that's check, check that I can I can check into that yeah so look into video settings or your virtual background okay that that might be a way for you to to experiment with it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have a question to Michael. Yes, uh, this is Mohammed. Uh, so, Michael, uh, when I uh, choose uh, for users to first register and then join my Zoom meeting, where do I see where are these registered members list? If you can share the screen and show us. Yeah, let me do that. So let me yeah. share my screen. Uh, While well, Michael's doing that, so setting up, this is, this is another really good feature of online meetings and where you're able to share screens and show people what you're talking about. This is where I think it's a little bit more difficult when you're in a Toastmasters meeting to present what you're talking about. Just takes a little bit to share the screen that you want to. Can anybody share the screen or does it have to be the host? 
It's a security so the feature. Host, the I've got to sit now where only a host can do it. And so currently Scott's a host, John is a host, and I'm a host for the meeting. Well, a co-host, they're, they're co-hosts. Co-host, yes. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. All right, perfect. Okay, so this is for my Anthem Express meeting here, and it is set up as a recurring meeting. So down, let me, uh, I'm gonna edit this meeting so you can see how it's set up. I'm gonna do all. So just to give you an idea, so I have my title. I've got uh, this for the next meeting date here. This meeting is set up as a recurring meeting and I got the recurrent schedule here. We meet weekly every Tuesday. And so this is the registration piece here. So by default, this button, this checkbox is not checked. So I check this box and then it gives me three options here. Attendees register once and can attend any of, any of the occurrences. So any of the future occurrences of the meeting, so the weekly meetings, they can attend. Or I can make it where attendees need to register for each occurrence. Or attendees register once and can choose one or more occurrences to attend. So that's another option as well. And so for our meeting, I just do the attendees register once and can attend any of the occurrences. You put your meeting password in as well. And so that's all set up. So now if I, so my registration is, is set up now. So let me, um, I'm just gonna do a cancel here. So now if I scroll down, I can see this is my registration URL that I give our members as well as make it available to any prospective members. Then down here at the bottom, there's a section called registration. So I can see that I've had 29 people register for our meeting at Anthem Express. I can view those individuals. I can get a report as well. Hmm. And if I ever need to resend them a invite to the meeting, I can do, I can click on the checkbox and I can, I can resend a message to them. Let's see. And so these are my options here. So I've got it set up to where registrants are automatically approved. Let me do edit so you can see the options. So I have it set up where they're automatically approved. But if it was a case where I felt like I needed to manually approve people. So let's say I was using this and there was a purchase involved or I wanted to only let certain people in, then I would manually approve who received the email back. I can choose whether I want to receive an email when someone registers. And I have these other options here, share button, et cetera. I can also set questions up. So for our meeting, we have our, your full name, first name and email are required. I added last name. Also added country is optional since we've had a, several international visitors to our, our club recently. And then you can also do custom questions. So my custom question is, are you in Toastmasters? And that's required. So that just helps us out to know is, is this person a prospect or not? Okay. So Michael, if you uh, require registration, can, can you yourself preload it with the, the people that you know? It probably doesn't work that way, does it? Uh, no. they, they have to take action. Yeah, they still have to take action. So I have to still email them. I don't think I can set a list. Um, that's a good question, though. I have to look into that, John. And if you if you allow automatic approval, can you go back later and and actually uh, remove? Good point. So if do I have that option? I see. There is a cancel registration at the bottom. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. It's a resend confirmation email down at the bottom or cancel registration. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, and so I guess, I guess that, that would, two, yeah, so two, I guess two, if, if Debbie wrong. was acting up or something in our meeting and I canceled her <laughs> registration <laughs> and I set it to be manual approval, then, so that would be a good option. You're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter which domain they come from. I was just noticing there, Correct. there were many different domains. Yes. Yeah, so they can come from any, any email address, any email domain. It's fine. And then also along those, along those lines, I want to interject real quick. 
Okay. Somebody asked me last Saturday to kick them out of a Zoom meeting because they were struggling and they, they sent me in the chat, they lost audio. When I kicked them out, they couldn't come back in, even though I had the setting that they're allowed back in. So I don't know why it's not working right. Now, did you have the setting before or after your meeting started? Before the meeting started, I okay. allowed people to come back in after I removed them and okay. it did not let her. So there's a glitch in the software. I had to cancel the whole meeting and let everybody climb back on. Well, I know, I mean, they're constantly updating the security settings with yeah. Zoom. So it could be, like I said, it could be a bug in there. Yeah, they made but, a ton But of normally, them. if you remove somebody, they consider that to be a security risk. So what you could have done <laughs> is put them in a waiting room or ask them to leave the meeting themselves. I mean, they have the option. They couldn't, they couldn't get to it. Wow. They, they were struggling and they couldn't get to it mm -hmm. and they were trying to get back on board. So they asked me to remove them okay. because it wow. was stuck. Yeah. So, so Mike, uh, uh, thanks for showing this one. So my question was more to do with a meeting which has already finished and I want to get the list of all the attendees which who has nice. attended my meeting yesterday, for example. Okay. So where do I see those lists? All right. So awesome. let me just show you this real quick. So this is the branding. So if you actually want to brand your registration page and, and Toastmasters gave us banners for this, this is a custom one that we created. So this is where the, the banner and the logo go. So in terms of Muhammad's question, you have to go to, I think it's under account management and then reports. Yes. And then I would come to meeting, view registration reports for the meeting. And I would pick, let's pick Anthem Express here. I would do my meeting duration. So the last Anthem Express meeting was yesterday. So 414 and I would do generate. And just do all registrants. All right, so it's loading, and then it gives me a list of everybody that signed in. Um, and this is, I take it back. So this is everybody that actually registered yesterday. Oh, I haven't put it up yet, sorry. So now if I do download. Oh, you got to download it. Yeah. Yeah, and then let me open it up in Excel. Yeah, this is perfect. So this is what I wanted to see, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. So then it does get, well, you can't, you may not be able to see my Excel screen because I think I'm only sharing my browser. But yeah, it opens up in Excel for you, Mohammed. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you if you noticed that there there is in Zoom at least, there's a lot of analytics. Yes. In this in their report section, there there's a ton of things that you can look at. Yeah. User activity reports, user usage reports, and even just within this, there's seven or eight sub reports that you can find. Yeah, you know, like I haven't even looked and see what all down these are you know but yeah you're right hey, a lot this of analytics is, this is gail i have a question okay. so there's a lot of uh, great features that are in this but if you sign up for basics are these features available or do you have to purchase a subscription for the basic one there's a lot of things you can't do like you can't do registration you cannot do polling yeah you can't do polling i don't remember what else I was hoping you guys would show us polling. I haven't done it yet. Michael, I think you have access to that because you're... Okay, let's set up a quick oh, I, poll. I looked on, I didn't have polling. So it sounds like to get the features that you really need, those advanced features that you're showing, it makes sense to go ahead and get uh, uh, to subscribe. Yeah, so, yeah probably. So Michael, no, where did you get it... to this? I didn't notice what you clicked on to get this. Oh, problem. sorry. <laughs> down at the bottom, down at the bottom where this says security participants chat, there'll be a polling thing. But I think the polling thing only comes up or the selection only comes up for those uh, hosts. Yes. I'm so I own it and I haven't been able to figure out a way to get okay, it. Okay, so you do have to enable it, Kathy. So let me go there first. Let I me did. cancel the polling. You did, did enable, enable it? it. Yeah. So the settings? <laughs> I'll keep trying. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so if you enabled it, you should see it. Hmm. Do you have to regenerate? There's a there, there's a like a regenerate on the settings way down at the bottom. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I think that's your that's your key that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too, Scott. Okay, yeah, that's this just integration the key. here. Yeah, I never did it because I thought it might be just that key. So that would be used if you're integrating with another service. 
a third party service that's using your um your Zoom credentials. Hmm. For example, Is like it, if you have a custom Facebook Live set up, then they would be using it. I thought at first it might have been that I needed to be in the meeting to do the poll, but then when I went to the description on how to do polls, it said to pull up a poll you have already created. Yeah, so you can do them in not, you can do them in advance as well. So you can do them both ways? Yes. Okay. So this has to be enabled. Right. Yeah. And then for me in the meeting, I can see polls. So there's managed participants and there's polls and there's new share. So that's where the poll lies. So I'll just click on it. I can add a question. Uh, let me move that out the way. This is where you might be able to do like a uh, vote for your best table topics. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Vote for your best speaker. And you can put people's names in there. Answer one, answer two. I thought it might be fun for table topics too. You could put some really cute questions in there and just for grins. That way everybody can participate. Well, you can't, I mean, it's still just a um, single answer uh -huh. type poll. Right. So for example. You can put some funny third answers. <laughs> if I launch the polling now, You'll see, so for table topics, you can have something like this. It'd be speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, and then you would vote. I pick number one. Okay. <laughs> I have heard that some mobile devices can't use the polling feature. So that could be a concern if you are trying to vote among your clubs. And then also hosts and co-hosts can't vote. So I didn't have a radio button in there. Yeah, so that can I cause you some issues too with your voting if you're trying to get, you know, everybody to vote. Yeah, well, that's so, crummy. So when we create the poll, Michael, there is option to either allow or don't allow? So no, it's just by default. I'm not sure why they don't allow the host to vote, but it's just a um, feature. Maybe in meeting may not be, but in webinar, there is always a checkbox. So if you don't check, it will go to even the host and the co-host and they can vote. But I'm not sure. In the webinar? Yes, in webinar. Oh, okay. In the Zoom webinar? Yes. So I'm but end. I've never tried in meeting, so that's why I had a question like, where, where do I do this? But good that you showed me uh, how to enable it and uh, they need to be available. Thank you. Yeah, with Zoom, you have to enable the features. I mean, there's a lot of, it does a lot. And I know yeah. like John is working on a document that has settings, but it's going to be a massive document probably. <laughs> just in the <laughs> settings, uh, just in that settings section there, there's, yeah, there's a ton of things that you can do in there. It yeah, keeps changing but, and it's going to change again this Saturday. Yeah, that's the fun thing about technical document. documentation, right? It changes. Yeah, maybe You get a screenshot, work. then it changes. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it, what we can do is uh, we should only document what is most needed for our meetings that can be useful instead of listing all 100 features, list 10 features which we are using. And that's what we've been trying to do, like especially with security features to keep the meeting secure, but they keep making changes. I mean, their changes are good, but it does, I mean, there's a change. Like their new security icon is really helpful. It's a, a great time saver. So I'm, thinking, I'm thankful they did it. They did it. Yeah, we didn't have to and, have a password today. And and the reason they are changing the security settings because there is a, a negative campaign against Zoom. Yeah. Uh, people are saying, okay, this is compromised and your PC is not safe, your mobile is not safe. Then they have to literally uh, come come up with some lot of security features to ensure they are not losing the user base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is smart. Good, good business. Yes, strategy. but but they have come up with really great features like waiting room. Uh, mm -hmm. So until you allow, nobody can simply enter, and you got a lot of other controls which was not available before. Yeah, nope. there was a couple great. of other That's questions. Great. Yeah, a couple of other questions came up. Uh, a couple sent to me privately. One of them: uh, What is the best practice to show timing cards with virtual backgrounds? For example, instead of showing a timer card that you would do manually. You know, you'd hold up a green card or hold up a yellow card. Is there any other best practice? So the virtual background works great if you're able to use it. Some people don't have, because of your background, you know, you don't have a green screen, you don't have good lighting. It may or may not work for you. 
But another option is you can actually, um, let me see, who has a, where's Carrie at? Is Carrie still on? I was gonna get Carrie to do it. She's muted. Okay. Carrie is still on. Okay, your camera's not showing. I'll get Scott to do it. Scott, Yeah. can you do this? Can you pull up? So John's <laughs> holding up a card that says yellow, but Scott, do your virtual background real quick. And so I want to see if you can if you can green. cover your camera. Can you cover your camera, Scott? Like, can you? Oh yeah. yeah. So that's so one way to see. Scott fingers. covers his camera, and it's completely green. So that's another option for people, especially if you have a camera cover. Like I have a little two dollar camera cover that I have over my computer that I can slide on and off. What you can do is you can also use a post-it note. You can just go like that. I would think. Yep. I mean, it just has to be dark enough to, to not let any light through. And these, these templates are actually, you can download those from TI. Yep. These are templates that TI has on there. Just Google or just search in their search box, online meetings, and you can find these templates. And then I've created some as well. So with big lettering, just in case if somebody's colorblind, they can still read the letters of the color. That, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's good too. Yep. There was another question about uh, how do we get to enjoy a free account with Zoom for uh, Toastmasters Club? Some people are using WebEx, but we, they don't know if it's going to be temporary or not. Can you show them how to get to the, uh, how to do a Zoom free account? Michael? Oh, the actual free one? Yeah. Okay. That one's only 40 minutes unless you get some special arrangement from what I just go to zoom.us and um, yeah, share a browser. Let's see. So if I go to. Yeah, I, I understand the free Zoom. You mean the yeah. district account? Is that what you're asking about? I thought I got an email saying that the district has purchased a Zoom account that could be shared yes so what what division are you in division b b d is in dog b as in dog yes okay contact betty zwayer yeah betty zwayer uh has a zoom account and she is working with her area directors and clubs to schedule those in her calendar like michael just showed you So hopefully there's not a lot of overlap. If there is overlap, um, we, we can work with you. If there's two meetings the same night in the same division, you cannot do that with the That's same. That's correct. Okay. It's not a perfect system. We had to right. kind of cut it off somewhere, um, but this should not this should not deter you from having your online meetings. You can still do a free one, but let me know. And there there may be some opportunities to shift it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, Once I think ninety percent of the meetings we can we can schedule, but there may be a few that, like Bill said, you can't do two at once. Voice of Independence has an account also available. Uh, we just need it Monday nights, but it's available at other times for other clubs. So uh, we'll be happy to help you. Yeah, and so also if you have a small right. club, you know, I'd recommend probably you know, combining with another club too to do a, a larger online meeting because you have that ability to do that now. I've seen other clubs in other districts that have been doing that with smaller clubs. They've got a club with like, you know, five or six people that has been struggling for years. They combine with another club online to make a nice fun meeting. Yeah, the Dublin Advanced Toastmasters combined with Gehanna for the first meeting so Gehanna could get used to the format. So it's good for a trial run and then they can split out later. Thank you, Lavinia, for putting the Toastmaster timing cards on there. Yeah. One person asked, uh, did, we did, we have a, did we need a password to actually join this meeting tonight? Um, I, my understanding, Michael, and correct me if I'm wrong or John, is that there's a couple different ways to join a meeting uh, on your computer. You can have a, a, a general link to zoom.us. You can click on a join button 
and then you can type in the number, but you're gonna need to type in a password manually. That's one way to get in. The second way to get in is if you have a, an encrypted link, a long link, if you will, and that basically has all the information. It's a, basically a one click. You click it once and it gets you through to the meeting without having to enter the password manually. Is that the two that get on, on your PC? Yes. Okay. I have a question. How do you sign, how do you do that second uh, procedure? That was part of the registration. So that registration checkbox I showed earlier, that sent that encrypted key with the password. But actually, I think take it back. Actually, you don't even need registration for that. If you require a password, Zoom will give you a link, a, a full encrypted link that you can send people. So cut and paste that a whole encrypted link and yes. paste it somewhere where you uh, know you, you know where it's going. Try not to put that encrypted link on a public share site or a public site where people can just click on it and zoom bomb you. Okay, will do. Yep. So one of the thing is Scott, I have noticed if you're uh, if you have a, a like enable the registration compulsory. So even though if somebody has encrypted, it will ask for the registration first. Hmm. Yeah, then uh, you'll be allowed to join. join the yeah, meeting. there might be a registration encryption there. I think the one that I sent you, I basically, I, so I, I was in a club meeting before this and Mohammed's actually in my club. And I, I copied and pasted the link that you gave me, the registration link that you gave me, Michael. And I gave that to my club. And I said, click on this. They had to register and then they got the link to actually join this meeting. Exactly. So registration is no matter which method you're using, you have to register. You cannot bypass. Uh, you could. I could, um, Michael probably as a host could has the encrypted link and I think he could copy and paste that. Well, no, I think, I think because I have registration required, I think you still had to put your name and your email address in. Okay. That makes exactly. Yes. Yeah. Because this, I mean, I think before you used to could do, bypass that, but it's part of their security. They're, you know, they really want you to do that. And it's like they require a password as by default now. Okay. John, did you see any other questions from your perspective? John Humpert? I'm looking in chat and I see Steve Logan has a question in chat. Uh, about putting the laptop camera uh, basically in a raised position so that if you're standing and making your presentation, how do you get the laptop uh, up in the air? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, you may want to try like a card table with a kitchen chair on top. That might be getting the height. I mean, we won't be able to see the, the card table in the kitchen chair. It just... You, you need to stack up something that you uh, that you feel is sturdy enough. It's not going to trip. It's not going to knock your laptop uh, so it falls down. Um, if you've got a file cabinet, for instance, that's sort of the height that uh, that's necessary. Uh, you you you'll have to be a little creative to uh, raise it up. But it's a great thing to focus on. That way you appear it's a, you're you're at a friendlier level uh, you're not you know you're not looking down at people you're not looking up at people and the camera's so not looking up at consideration <laughs> right yeah that's kind um, of annoying right there <laughs> yeah it, it it does have an effect on the audience but it's probably more important um you know, if you're a contestant uh, or you're delivering a club speech and you want to make sure that, uh, that you're doing the best practices, it's very important that you've got, you know, good lighting, that you've got good audio. Um, you might want to stay away from wireless things, especially if you don't know where their battery levels are. Uh, so there's a a few things that are a little bit more important than the level of the laptop, uh, but but that is that is a good consideration, and those are some creative possibilities. 
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So Janet has a question. If I'm a meeting host, how do I let someone in from a waiting room? So you will actually get notified if you have in a, if you have enable waiting room turned on, if somebody comes to the meeting, a po we get a pop up and then you can just do admit or you can choose not to admit them. Like you can choose to, to wait, to have them wait. For example, if you have a speaker to speaking, you may not necessarily want somebody just to come into your meeting. So you can choose to do that and just keep them in the waiting room and then you just click enable. So the, the key thing is in there, there it would be really good to have a, a sergeant at arms or a Toastmaster that's very good at monitoring who's coming and going. So sergeant at arms, you know, you, you may have one at, at, your, at your physical club where you're, you know, they're monitoring the door or that sort of thing, or they're setting up the room. This is also, this environment here is also very conducive for a sergeant at arms in terms of that type of duty they have to be at least a co-host you, uh, yes. you you have to give them that power you know it's possible when you've got a, a free account for instance uh, or really in, in almost any situation it's possible that you could run a simple meeting without any host uh, nobody's claiming the host it's just nobody bothered um, that's that's kind of like a one of the early driverless cars mm -hmm. uh, that uh, at, at some point you you probably want for instance the host let's say you notice that somebody has got a background they've got their mic open and there's background noise and they didn't they stepped away and there's and the microphone is still open well, that's not really the time that you want to figure out who's going to be the host. Um, you want to do that ahead of time so that the host has the power to just go in and turn off their mic. Host has got a lot of power. <laughs> I have a question about the turning off mic situation. So can you, I mean, sometimes for for me, it's hard for me to tell exactly where the sound's coming from. If, uh, like right now, I do see there's a green line around me because I'm speaking, and every now and then there's like, like a little dashed line underneath someone. But if there's multiple sounds coming from different people, um, do you can you click certain people to mute them, or is it all or nothing? You can mute all, or you can click certain people. And if you click on participants list, it sorts everybody by first if they by host and then if uh, they have their mic open. You. Yeah, so you see everybody with their mics open alphabetically and then you see everybody else. Okay. So that makes it a little bit easier to to turn people off. I think you can mute people individually by just hovering the mouse cursor over their name or their box or their video box. Yes. And if one of the one of the things will come up that says mute. Okay, I see that for myself. So I, obviously, you would have it for everyone. Yeah. So as yeah, a host, thing, you have that control. A good thing if you're the host, if you're the toastmaster of the meeting, you ask everybody to mute except the person who's speaking. And right. You can, as you host, you don't want to you don't want to have to do these things, but right. you know, sometimes for the sake of the sixty other people, you go ahead and and do some things. Right. Um, you know, let's say if we were in a critical moment right now, um, I've got the control to, to to mute everybody. And then, so so boom, everybody would be silent. And then I could go back and, and unmute mute the one person that we want. So that's a quick way to, uh, rather than take the five seconds to hit the five different mics that are open, uh, the, the host has got that power. So it's it's better to have a half a second of, no sound and recover quickly. Is that how it's done in contest? Yeah. Yes. And in contest, we have a, a security option where we can say participants can't unmute themselves. Right. So that'll help also. Good. Oh, you just opened it up so I could see all the mutes. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think you could do the same with video, can't you? Yes. Somebody had a, same, a similar question about video. Can you? 
stop their video because maybe if they're doing something that's distracting. Not not a one at a time, yes. Yeah, one, one at a time. time, but not all, not a and, mass. And you can't at least I don't know of a way to prevent them from reopening their video. Do you know of a way, John? Because if I stop it, I think you can just start it back, right? Right. So uh, I mean, the way to prevent them is tell them they're going to be removed if they do. Yeah. Uh, one question to Mike. Yes. Uh, how do we promote anyone to become the co-host during the session which is going on? So I just go to the participants list. Mm -hmm. And if I hover over a name, there's a more mm -hmm. option. I just say do more. Like to, do you like to share the screen and show? I don't know if I can share the participants list. It's, Zoom doesn't really let you share their controls. Um, but I believe man, once you share the screen, it shows what you're doing, right? on your desktop not not inside the zoom window but so mm -hmm. Mohammed, i just made you a co-host so you can take a look real quick so if you hover over somebody mm -hmm. and click yes. on more in the participants list yep i can see mute my uh, i okay i can see only thing related to me okay no i i see it so i can control for anybody else stop video um is this something related to only my control? No, so right now you're a co-host, so you can you have full control. you can mute my mic. Why don't you go ahead and try that, Mohammed? I'm near okay. the you're in the top. Just mute my mic for me. Uh just a moment. So many people will think. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so is this feature uh something with only uh, license account or this is something with a free account as well? I think it's with a free account. As long as you have the host, as long as you sign in as a host, you should be able to do it with a free account. Now, okay. if, you, if you mute somebody, can they unmute themselves or are you the only person that can unmute them? There's an option. So okay. I can say, yes, you can, un participants can unmute themselves or I can say participants cannot unmute themselves. And where, where is that option, Mike? So if you go to um if you click on so everybody can't see this but muhammad you can see the security badge mm -hmm. down at the bottom oh if yes you click on that oh no it's not there sorry let me see maybe it's under hmm. let me find it real quick i don't know where it is either um is it on the zoom.us? Oh, here it is. Okay. So if you go to participants, participants. Mohammed, mm -hmm. you see where it says unmute all and to the right of it, there's a button with three dots. Uh, yes, more, right? Yes. So if you click on, if you look at that, you see where it says mute participants upon entry, allow participants to unmute themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, I got it. Yes. So these are, can you see my screen? I just shared my screen. Uh, yeah, I, just your, I just see your name. Oh, okay. Because under the security, there is one option like uh, share a screen. So I, I am doing this one, but not sure if you can see my screen. Yeah, that's, that's a different context. But, but for us to be able to see you, um, over on the left side, you have the stop video. Uh, apparently, you've stopped your video. So if you want to um, unstop your video. Start uh, your video, right. Yeah, Start so the sharing has nothing to do with my video, right? No. So sharing means I am different contexts, yeah. Yeah. In the, in the security, you're taking, you're taking charge as to whether other people can share screen. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So, uh, uh, so uh, to this share, is... you click on share screen, the green, the green icon that says share screen. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is the known one. Uh, I know, but I was just wondering. Who else I wants can... to be a co-host? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the event to do that. Yeah. 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 Because I was wondering if there is option to share my Zoom uh, session, what we are seeing, right? So, so that I can show somebody, okay, this is how you should choose the option. This is how you can do things. Yeah, we've tried it before, but it doesn't, you can share everything except for the Zoom window, it seems like. Yeah, so 
So normally I have to take screenshots and then and show that to people. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, this is Steve. I have a question. Uh, we uh, in our last m uh, meeting, we I sh I, I used the share screen and shared a uh, web page and a music. A little, it was a YouTube video. Okay. And when I played it, it didn't have any sound. How do you how do you make that? That's so, yeah. How do how do you turn the sound on? <laughs> I so there's an option that says share computer sound. Uh, let me. Yeah, could you show me on your share screen button, me? Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can take a screenshot real quick, and then I'll okay. share this. Yeah, Stephen, you just go down to your share screen control, and you can see it for yourself. Okay. Don't don't actually share, but because, but but when you click the share button and you see for yourself the dialogue that Michael would be trying to show you anyway. Okay. Well, he went ahead and clicked. Uh, oh, that's mine. Yeah, I understand. Let's see. Right, because it was silent. It, it it showed the you know video, but then it was just total silence. Right. There's a <laughs> there's a checkbox at the bottom of that. Uh, Mike, if you'll Michael, if you'll unshare or, okay. or stop sharing, then people can have a look at the visual themselves. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the green icon, the share screen. Uh, just click open that dialog box, and and along the bottom. There are two check boxes, oh, and yeah. you want to you want to make both check boxes uh, uh, marked, and uh, and then you can play, for instance, a YouTube music video or or some other video with with sound, and it will go across. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And and also, if you only want to play music, if you click on advance, you can do music with so that would be computer sound only. And you don't have to share your screen. All right. Okay, I'll try it. Thank you. You're welcome. So this question, Mike, is related to co-host again. So one way is doing the co-host or promoting somebody as a co-host during the session. Let's say I want to give this control in advance to somebody. Can I do this? Um, yes, you can get. Well, you can't give co-host in advance. You can give host in advance. So what you would do is. You'd email them the link to the meeting, but also the host key. So every every account, whether it's free or paid, has a host key attached to it. So where do, do where can we see that? It's in the settings. I'm Zoom sure. Zoom.us, right? And then your account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the key is going to be different for each meeting, or is it a common key? It's a common key, and it's changeable by you. So if you okay. don't like the default that, that Zoom gives you, you can always change it to something that you would know or your club would know. Mm -hmm. um, so only the host. Say there are a couple of questions that some people have put out there, and I don't know if we have answered those questions or not okay oh let's see from the group chat yeah i noticed gail's gail's question and i think we answered it okay i mean it's about uh stopping your video um i mean alt v on a windows keyboard gets rid of me for instance and press alt v again and i come back up so it's a toggle. Uh, the V is for video. So Alt V is uh, is a kind thing to do if you're going to on camera. You're going to you'd otherwise be doing something that would be disruptive. You're going to get up. Uh, uh, you're going to pick up the cat. You're going to take a you know a drink of a beverage that you don't want everybody to see. Whatever it is. Uh, it will cause all the pictures to jostle around a little bit, but I think we're getting accustomed to that. Yeah. Uh, because your your frame will disappear until you come back, but uh, but but it's a skill just like turning uh, muting and unmuting uh, for audio. It's muting and unmuting also. Um, it's considerate if if it's doable for you. It's considerate to be present in video. Um, you know, we've got some non-video participants, and I assume that they are not sharing their video because they've got 
uh, they've got good reasons. And, and I don't go there. I don't worry about that. Um, and for contests, we're going to ask you to turn off your, uh, your video. And good most time. people, in my experience, they just, they do it, they figure it out. And uh, the more Zoom meetings you attend, the, the better you'll get at it if you don't, haven't thought about it before. Hey, John, can you show them how to um, hide non-video participants to declutter their screen a little bit like you did last Okay. Time? Yeah. So, um, so you would go down to the bottom. You would go to um, your, your, not to the stop video, but right beside it, there's Arrow. that carrot. Yeah. Yes. The, the carrot that points up. Um, not the one that's near the, the mute, but the one that's on the other side of uh, pointing toward the camera lens, if you will. Uh, go into video settings, and uh, in video settings, you'll you'll see a small view of your own camera, and uh, and there is a checkbox among all of those different things that uh, it says hide non-video participants. I'd show it to you, but I can't show it to you. Um, um, it's it's third from the bottom, and uh, uh, yeah. So, so that way you're not seeing a bunch of just names in boxes uh, or, or pictures of people in boxes. They, they, they simply just kind of roll up and, and uh, are shown only up at the top. It says total non-video participants. You can read it up there and you can see the count. Uh, and, and, and that information also agrees with what's in the participant list. So if you open your participant list, and uh and and have a look well you see the same information just presented uh diff differently yep and this is going to be really helpful like for the contest for example when you don't necessarily want to see all the the black boxes with the names in them just to declutter and that way you only see in the timer yourself as a speaker if you're a contestant and maybe the contest chair or contest um, toastmaster so it just helps to declutter your screen. Uh, I have a question. So obviously, as co-host hosts, you can mute people, but can you also turn off videos other than the person, you know, certain people? I don't see that right now. Yeah. So if just hover over, like hover over my my icon or somebody's icon, and you see the three the three dots. Yes. And then you can stop video. Okay. And you can also spotlight a video as well. Okay. What is, what's Spotlight about? So Spotlight. So if I want to spotlight Kim, for example, this, so I just spotlighted Kim. Now she's the, the main video on everybody's screen. So if she was in a contest, I would spotlight her, then she would be on everybody's TV. <laughs> I mean, everybody's screen. So Kim, what do you see, though? Do you see I see, I see that I am spotlighted, yes. I see, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, we don't do that during a contest because, well, you need to make sure that the timer can be seen. Yeah, how do yeah. you, I mean. Just don't do it. Individuals can do it. You know, in, an individual can control. They can pin. Or yeah, what gets made large. But the contestant themselves, uh, the contestant probably wants to see both themselves and the timer probably equally sized, I'm guessing. So this question is related to recording mic so let's say i'm recording my meeting in the cloud uh, do we have any size limit yes there's i think it's maybe one gig or one and a half gig for the cloud i normally record on my local it just works out better because the mm -hmm. file is so big anyway it just you know i've got plenty of hard drive space i just record on my local okay okay yeah, i have a uh, i have a question uh if uh, I saw an online meeting uh, somewhere on the East Coast and they had where, where it says my name here, right here, they said it had their role, their meeting role, for instance, yeah. evaluator, general evaluator, Steve Smith. How do you change that, that little name there to, to reflect that? So like I just renamed you, so as host or co-host, I can rename you. But also Steve, if you um, hover over your name, you should see three dots. Well, ho hover over your uh, picture. Yeah, over your picture, yeah. And then rename yourself. 
You see that option? You're muted right now too. We keep yes, finding yes, I yes, I do see that. Yes, I do. Okay, so, very good. Yeah. Excellent. But that's a good point. Yeah, some clubs do put the role in the name, so that, that is helpful. Okay, thank you. I think someone, so, there, so we have a question in chat about, okay. um, it, let's say you're the kind of person that, that wants to take your turn. Uh, how do you indicate that? How, basically, how do you raise your hand here? And, you know, probably one way is just, just kind of go like this. Um, and maybe that will help. Or you just pretend like you're from a big family and you <laughs> blurt it out, start to blurt it out. Um, it's reaction. not really a raise my hand function here. Yeah, there's use reactions too. There's down at the bottom right. I think yeah, everybody. There is. I just raised yeah. my hand. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've got to be looking at the. Yeah, the video screens. The yeah, maybe yeah, the only pro yeah, the only problem with raising hand is at a time you can see four or five videos on top, and if somebody is right side, very right side, you'll not be able to see. Yeah. So there is option yeah. to raise hand uh, there in the on the name. You can always use that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just good to kind of figure out where you can charge in with your little bit of voice and see if you can uh, obtain control. So I mean, it's a good question. Uh, we're a leadership organization, so it's your chance to practice leadership. Um, and any other questions here? Um, I, I see options for yes, no, go slower, go faster. I don't know if that's because I'm co-host now. But what is what are those about? Just click on one and try it and see what it does. It makes a mark in the participant list. So Maybe whatever. Um, yeah. If somebody's asking a question, like a host is asking a question. Right. Okay. And it's uh, yeah. it's something that 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 the co-host can erase. So it's it, it kind of works as a tally. Hey, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? um the, the co-host can get an indication okay and uh it's not the same as the response the the response or the reactions is this little uh you know this little icon it's right up here now um the thumbs up that's that's somewhere else that's at the bottom of your screen okay. Okay. yeah so um it, it, Right, so so someone's asking, can we do one for beginners, one for intermediate, and then for advanced? I, you know, there's not that much to it. It's kind of like when you learn a, a language, you're going to you're going to start off learning maybe the family members in one lesson, and then numbers one through ten in another lesson. Well, what if you get those the other way around? You're you're not going to get your counting mixed up with family members. It's just you know two different lessons and it doesn't really matter you don't have to learn them in sequence so and zoom keeps changing so we're not going to be able to tell beginners um is, well just we just all are kind of drinking a little bit from the fire hose if you don't understand everything it'll come back around because the important stuff keeps coming back up Yep. Just but it, but it's, a, it's a great question, and I understand where it's coming from. Uh, it's not the way that we like to learn necessarily, but it's probably going to work. And and just piping up with your questions is re really good. Last week, we went over a lot of basics. It was probably more basic than, than today was. Today, we had a, a myriad of different types of questions, different levels. Last week was a little bit more basic what what i would advise you to do if, if those of you who missed last week i i can send out a list or a not a list but a link to the webinar from last week we did record it mm -hmm. you can review that and see how that maybe suffices for you for your needs so i can i can send that to to anybody if you want to just put your name in the chat i think i have one person's name and I'll send that to to you. Is there anybody at any kind of a stuck point that uh, 
it's going to be good for them just to talk about it a little bit. Um, I can hang around a little bit in, in case you want to dismiss and just people that happen to be at those points, I can hang around for them. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining tonight. We had 30 plus people and, and we had a very, very diverse discussion. I really want to thank uh, Michael and John for providing some of that technical expertise. They are definitely the ones that have used uh, Zoom the most. I believe one of the people that have used Zoom the most in our district. And it's great to have them here to share their expertise, both beginner, intermediate, and a little bit more advanced. So I really appreciate the time, appreciate the efforts. We have recorded this, if I'm not mistaken, right, Michael? Yes. Or we are recording it? Yes. <laughs> and then we can uh, also post that uh, to our, <laughs> we can also post that to our Facebook and YouTube channel. So if you don't know, here's a plug. The, our District 40 Facebook page, we've got over 800 people that just provide a plethora of information. It's great. A lot of good online information in there some links there. And then also in our YouTube channel, we have a lot of instructional videos and a lot of going back to a little bit of history for speech contests. So if you want to take a look at some old speech contests, contestants, I should say, uh, take a look at them and see what the District 40 talent is, you like is all to about. Share the link, so thank you for your time tonight. If yep. you can share the link, yeah, link of do. those Facebook, YouTube and all, that would be yep. good. Thank you. Yep. I'll send that to you. Uh, I'll send that to you, Mohammed, separately. Anybody else want to know? Thank you. I have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank Thanks again Thank you. for your participation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I need to get in touch with you sometime here soon. All right. Buenas noches. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Are you sticking around, Michael? Yeah, I can for a little bit. Or if you want to make me post and...